Good day, everybody. I hope this finds you well. I am blessed to have Dr. Crystal Morrison with us today on our Large Impact podcast series, and she is certainly making a large impact. Um, she's pretty amazing. Uh, she's an executive advisor, strategist, leader, scientist, and tech entrepreneur. Like, it's just insane. So one of the things that um, I guess that brought us together initially first, because we've known each other for, I want to say, four years. Yeah, yeah, that's Maybe. about right, I think. Yeah, yeah like three, four years. And it it, it kind of came together when, um, you know, you were starting at the very beginning of your amazing app mm -hmm. and, and, and solution. And you can talk a little bit more about it. Meerkat Village. Yes. Do you want to give us just a a taste like it tell us what meerkat village does yeah so meerkat village is a tech platform that allows parents parents like you and me becky that have children with special needs or just have children that need some extra support sometimes it helps those parents um keep all of their providers and supporters on the same page so the parent can create a digital village for their child and invite their entire village of support in to be able to collaborate and communicate. That must be um, wonderful, right? You know, to, yeah. to that um, when I was started to think about it, I was like, oh my gosh, like it's got to be for some people and families besides being a godsend, but like in the initial part of it, starting to determine who is part of that village and, you know, and who does what for who and when. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess you had mentioned, I think before that there's different permission levels that you can set up for different people or, or is it just like, we're all in this together? Yeah. So, so there, uh, there will be different uh, permission levels right now. Um, basically the parent can invite in anyone that supports their child, whether it's a therapist or a teacher or grandma or a sitter, right? The, the parent can invite those uh, folks into the digital village. And when the parent invites them, they're also completing the HIPAA consent authorization form. So um, very much like today, you know, we can complete a consent authorization form, giving permission to grandma to talk to the therapist or vice versa. Um, we're leveraging that ability uh, to be able to um, have everyone within the digital platform to be able to collaborate and communicate. And what was it? I mean, I guess it was your own personal experience. Like, yeah, what was like when did the light bulb go off and you're like, aha, I've got to, I've got to do this. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, you know, I've got three, three kiddos all with different needs. Um, and for the past 20 years, I, I felt like I've spent almost a full-time job just trying to keep everybody that's supporting them on the same page. And yeah, that's a lot of professional people like therapists and teachers, but um, you know, I've never been fortunate enough to live in a place where I had a lot of family close. So, you know, not only am I trying to keep my mom in, in Arkansas up to date, you know, I'm trying to build my own support system locally, whether it's with family or whether it's with friends or neighbors, so, you know, I spent a lot of time just trying to keep everybody on the same page with respect to what's going on with the kids. And also, especially with my oldest, who's autistic, you know, there were a lot of different strategies we were using that we were trying out at home or school and really wanted to make sure that those strategies we were using, we were using in all of the different places he was at, whether it was after school or soccer or or whatever that we were consistently using those strategies to support him. And so about six years ago, actually, um, I, I met another gentleman here in Pittsburgh and we were talking about this, this idea, you know, everybody says it takes a village, but we don't necessarily do a good job of leveraging our village as, as well as we should. And what if we could use technology to really help support that and, and really help 
people who are supposed to be acting as a treatment team act as a treatment team. And that's where the, the seeds in Meerkat Village uh, started. Uh, how'd you come up with the Meerkat part? <laughs> I love that question because it's so cool. Meerkats in the wild, you might not know this, I encourage you to check out National Geographic or whatever, but meerkats in the wild live as these big cohesive communities where all of the adult meerkats have a big role in taking care of the baby meerkats, right? And so the idea is what if we just behaved a lot like meerkats and took better care of each other as a community? And uh, that's where the name Meerkat Village came from. You know, I've been dying to know that for quite some time. It makes a lot of sense. And I'm sure everybody, yeah. asks, you know, you're like, meerkat, what? Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I love it. I I, I do. And now I want to get a meerkat and have my own little yeah. my own village you know, for sure. That or a sloth, I haven't decided yet. Yeah, those are pretty good too. <laughs> Agreed. So, you know, it's it's kind of interesting because, you know, you're a, a tech entrepreneur, you know, mm -hmm. with this SaaS model thing you got going on, but yeah. you're a doctor of chemistry. <laughs> yeah, crazy. Yeah, no, I'm a scientist uh, by training and my background's in chemistry and material science. And, you know, we had talked a little bit about when I had an opportunity to actually physically meet you mm -hmm. at our book launch, which we'll get to. That's right. Um, he, um, you know, and, and you're like an expert in paint, right? Paints and plastics. Yeah, yeah. And it, has that always been like, your thing so you have your phd and it's all in chemistry is it in that one little bubble of paint uh no it's it's more in like um polymers and plastics so um you know and that could include anything from uh paints to adhesives and sealants and and uh hard plastics that you know can include a lot of different things but mostly plastic materials and you know, I know that uh, Meerkat Village is like a, a passion project, right? Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like a calling and, and mm -hmm. things like that. But like, are, do you still get geeked out by the whole paint polymer chemistry things? Or you're just like, yeah. man, I just need to get away from it. And I've got to, <laughs> you know, I want to go over here and hang out with my meerkats. No, I still am 100% a scientist at heart. I still do some consulting in the chemistry and materials world. I really enjoy that work still. Um, you know, I think for me, the thing that drives me is when I'm faced with a tough problem, whether it's a personal situation or, you know, a technical challenge, when I'm faced with a tough problem, I want to find a way to bring people together to solve it. Um, and so I still am a total nerd. My, my husband is also uh, a chemist. And so he often talks to me about some of the work he's doing and we have jam sessions. Um, but yeah, I just like to tackle tough problems. So you brought it up, you brought up your hubs. Yeah. Yeah. And he's a chemist to, or a doctor too. In chemistry. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Like what, what's his bubble? So he's more in material science also, but uh, a little bit more into the physics side, uh, although he does work for a plastics manufacturing company and they're doing some really, really cool stuff with sustainable plastics and things like that. But uh, yeah, so we have a somewhat similar background. Is that how you met? Yeah, we did. We actually met at work uh, here in Pittsburgh many years ago. Uh, so, you know. The, the nerd thing brought us together. <laughs> How many years ago? Uh, we met um, nine years ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so, you know, here you're hanging out and, and playing with your, your, your hubs out there mm -hmm. in Pittsburgh and doing geeky things. So wow. with like, what, what's a, a fun date night for you? Cause I, well, like as autism yeah. parents, you know, I yeah. know that. Um, we used to call them speed dates or speed vacations. And so yes. the speed date was like one hour mm -hmm. and a speed vacation was like four hours. <laughs> <laughs> there was anything. You know, like... Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah. tell me what's your, uh, your, your, your speed date and vacation. What, what, what do you guys like to do together? 
Yeah, so um, we are really fortunate and that we live in a really cool neighborhood and we can walk one block down the street to our favorite little restaurant and bar. Um, so we have a standing speed date. <laughs> we have a standing date uh, every week where we just walk down the street and get a quick dinner or a quick drink. Um, and we, you know, have have been doing that for a while and it's it's really good just to have some time outside the house um sure. you know and most of the time we are talking about the kids but <laughs> right I know it's like you know like okay let's go and let's not talk about work or the kids and you're like oh cricket, right you know <laughs> what's going on and it is fun it you know and then I don't know if you have this issue but like let's just pretend that you've got four hours for the speed vacation yeah what plans like somebody's like hey I'll take the kids or whatever and all of a sudden you're like cool yeah and then you're looking at each other like what do we <laughs> do we could do you know like because when you know everything's possible you just it's too many decisions you know like we and then we wind up walking down the street you know and I, not usually doing anything different which is okay yeah that's that's us totally you know if we had one hour versus four hours we would probably end up in the same place still and have another glass of wine that's basically how that would work <laughs> it's true let's just keep the tab open we're that's going right. we're going going just leave it open <laughs> yes it's all good so um you know we had met like you know i was doing my you know autism training uh -huh. thingy and you were starting your meerkat yeah. village thing like so yeah tell, what has um transpired over you know like the last three or four years with meerkat mm -hmm. village because it started out very sim simple not that yeah. things are right um, kind of like where are you where were you then to now yeah um so then you know a, a few years ago three four years ago we had a very very basic prototype and what's happened over the past um, couple years, really, because uh, we've gotten a lot more traction over the past couple years. Um, we've been able to develop a, a beta, a beta app um, that was released on the Apple App Store and Google Play. Uh, we started a research study with uh, University of Pittsburgh collaborators looking at the usability of that beta platform. We also have uh, a number of users that um, we enrolled in the platform. And then uh, just a couple months ago, we launched the full platform. And uh, honestly, the beta platform was pretty complete, but there are some changes to the full platform. We've made um, the ability to subscribe and manage your subscription a lot easier using our website. So there are a lot of changes. There are a lot of progress. As with all things related to getting something new off the ground, things are slower than you would like to think. But we do have the full platform at, out now. We have um, you know, our affiliate partnership program. But you know, we also have um, users using the platform uh, across the United States. We don't have thousands of users yet, but we've got a good number of users and we've gotten some amazing feedback. You know, people really telling us that this has allowed them to finally get rid of the folder they've been sending oh, back and right, forth with their child. Big, yes. Big notebooks yes yes the folders that the kiddos taking back and forth to school and it's allowed the the speech therapist and the ot to get on the same page and start working together more so you know we've just gotten so much good feedback about how it's really made the ability for treatment teams to act more like treatment teams and also helped the treatment team see that the child is this whole person that has this whole life going on outside of the, you know, 30 minutes that they see that child once a week. So it's, it's definitely getting traction and, and positive feedback. And I know that, you know, because of your, I guess, your experience with autism and, mm -hmm. and all the different, uh, I guess, um, treatments, therapies, yeah. involved, and then you've got two other children too. Yes. Um, you know, so, uh, 
I under, you know, when you start something like this, you have to like pick a, pick a direction. You yeah. Know, yeah. Pick a lane plan. Mm -hmm. But you know, I, my parents are elderly, you yep. know, and they mm -hmm. have 50 million different doctor's appointments. And like, mm -hmm. I'm not so sure, you know, one's not one's yeah. down in Charleston and one's over here. And, you know, I, I would like to get them to do this mm -hmm. for that reason, because, you know, uh, you know, daddy's dangerous, man. He makes these appointments and he doesn't want anybody to go with them. Yeah. He just sneaks, I've been there. Sneaks in mm. and then he has no memory. Mm -hmm. So anyway, yes. uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of other applications and I'm sure, you know, like part of you is probably wanting to like whip off the blinders and like go this way and go that way and more users, more users. <clears throat> Yeah. Yeah. Cause that's where you get the traction, I guess. And yeah, are you, I, I'm assuming you had just mentioned that, um, the, the, the treatment team, are you getting feedback from them that they're finding it valuable as well? Yeah. So we're definitely getting feedback from, um, people who are like speech therapist, ADA therapist, um, OT, PT therapist, um, that, you know, their ability to, to use it. It's very easy to use. Um, they're able to, you know, kind of create action plans for the child within the app. And then everyone else, the speech therapists and such can see those as well. So, you know, we've definitely gotten a lot of positive feedback from specialty therapists. Um, and a lot of positive feedback from people who are part of the extended family, like the natural supports, um, grandparents and, and aunts and uncles that are really involved or, or family friends that are really involved in the kiddo's life. So yeah, that's been most of the, uh, the feedback we've gotten. You know, there's still naturally some hesitancy among like more traditional pediatricians um, you know, and, and so, you know, in the medical world, everyone talks about collaborative care. Everyone talks about, you know, being able to really treat the whole child. But as you know, in our, in our medical system, especially here in the United States, we don't do a very good job of that. And, uh, so any hesitancy we've gotten is really around, you know, people see the immediate benefit of it, but, it, it might be they perceive it as being difficult to incorporate into their existing um, you know, silos of care, if you will. Mm -hmm. Which I guess is like for, you know, cause you're, we're disruptors, right? Yeah. These, yeah. These Always. Ideas, everybody's like, mm -hmm. you know, okay, great. Yeah. But what, you know, and yeah. like you're trying to wrap their minds around it and we're like, really, it's really not that hard. Like yeah. I'm making it way harder exactly it needs to be yeah um, so if you're talking to um you know a family right mm -hmm. me you're talking to me yeah and you want to kind of set my expectations about the meerkat village kind of journey setup kind of type thing like i can mm -hmm. say easily from like one of my online modules it's between 30 and 45 minutes and blah 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 we have our little thing so like yeah walk me and us through kind of the 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 process yeah. of, of setting up your village yeah so um a new parent or or legal guardian would just go to our website meerkatvillage.com and subscribe to the platform and you can get a monthly subscription or a yearly subscription but either way you get 30 days free just to check it out so it takes about a minute to subscribe and then after you've subscribed, you use the same email address that you subscribed. You go on your phone, you go to the Apple Store, App Store, Google Play, you download Meerkat Village, and then you log in with your uh, email that you use to subscribe. And then it walks you through a basic tutorial about um, the functions of Meerkat Village. And then you can set up your profile, which takes about 30 seconds. And then you can set up your child's profile for the village. And that takes a couple of minutes. You can upload their picture if you like. You can say a little bit about them, their likes, their dislikes, uh, their diagnosis, if they have to, ha if they have one. Uh, so that takes a few minutes. 
Um, and then you can start inviting people into the village. All you need is their name and their email address. So from the time you decide that you want to check it out to actually using it and inviting people in is about 10 to 15 minutes. So when you're inviting somebody in, mm -hmm. do they go, uh, so let's say I'm inviting the, the, our kids GP, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. And so I send it to them or whoever, a therapist yeah. or whatever. What then do they see? Or like when you send the invitation, yep. is it? Yeah. So go tell me like when an invite gets sent out. Mm -hmm. So when you invite someone in as part of that invitation process, you are also creating the HIPAA consent authorization form, granting them permission to join the village and communicate with others that are in that village. So that provider or therapist will receive an email saying that you've invited them to your child's village. They receive that email and then they download the app to their phone, sign in with the email that you sent it to and join the village. And they can see the consent authorization form, not only for themselves, but they can see the consent authorization form for it, everyone else that you've invited. And so, especially if it's a therapist or provider or teacher, and they're concerned about legality and consent and compliance, it's HIPAA and FERPA compliant, and you can see every single person's consent form, which is something we can't do today. We still email and, and, and mail these things around. They're paper-based. It's terribly inefficient. But yeah, that, that person you invite would receive an email telling them that you've invited them, download it to their phone. And within, you know, again, just a couple minutes, they can be part of the village and, and start communicating. So it's almost like the slack of collaborative care. Yes, it, it really is. But in addition to just chatting back and forth, you can also, you know, create strategies and monitor whether everybody's following through on them. And you can also track your child's progress over time. So if there are really tough triggers like transitions and bedtime or noise and things like that, you can start to monitor how they're responding. And so not only, you know, can you chat back and forth, but for the first time, we can actually make sure we're all doing the same things. And we can also figure out if what we're doing is having any impact on the kiddo's progress or not. Positive um, or negative. Exactly. Right. You know, and if it's not working, let's try something different. And, right. and we spend a lot of time as teams just like, hey, I'm doing this at home. Try it here. Well, I don't know if it's working. It's the phase of the moon or allergy season. Like, right? You know, all of these things. It was the tag in a shirt, right? Oh, um, yeah. The cereal bar had a crack in it. I always love that one. It's just so Seriously. But, you know, so we, yeah, it's, it's like slack in some ways with that bonus of actually, you know, is what we're doing working? Let's figure this out finally. <laughs> You know, and I have to say, you know, uh, you were um, kind enough to um, allow me to be part of the affiliate program, which yes. I've, I've, I've not really engaged in. And part yes. of that was because I didn't really know what was entailed. And mm -hmm. I know yeah. you have those weekly calls and, you know, yeah. so you know how we're doing this. Oh, I understand. We're trying to, so yeah, I know, but I'm, I'm not making excuses, but I was like, that sounds a lot easier than mm -hmm. I had realized. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. just like, it's, it really is that easy. It's yeah. Like, yeah. It's not going to take a ton of time. And, you know, like you said, you just need uh, an, an email address and you're golden and then yeah. invite everybody to come collaborate. I think that's amazing. And, and kudos to you. Um, what was the hardest part in, in developing like, what was the, was it the HIPAA compliance or like, what, what was the biggest like bottleneck you couldn't wait to have fixed or done? Um, so, <clears throat> um, I think when it comes to workflows, because the concept in Meerkat Village is, is really straightforward, but when you're talking about making sure that people have consent to be able to join, you know, you really have to pay attention to 
workflows and making sure that there's not any sort of inadvertent workaround where someone could access someone's village without having the parent or legal guardian's consent to be there. And so we were extremely thorough and methodical about how we thought through those scenarios. I think the other thing that, you know, and this applies to anybody out there who's listening, who's been involved in tech or developing an app is, you know, we originally had all of this subscriptions going through the app store or Google play and that, you know, a little bit more streamlined, but it really ties our subscribers hands. You know, we were, we couldn't figure out a way to allow a subscriber to have more than one village. Well, Many of our families might have two children, both with different needs, right? They want two villages, not one. And so that was a big driver in us completely overhauling the front end of the platform to make it much more easy for our subscribers to manage their subscriptions, but also for our affiliate partners to be able to share Meerkat Village as well. Um, and that took a lot of time because once again, the workflows were extremely important, um, related to or the compliance. Had you taken it, like, I, I I'm feeling you right now, sister, because mm -hmm. like when you make yeah. a decision to do something like that, yeah, this is putting the brakes on everything. Yeah. Oh yeah. my God. And then you're just like, you're like white knuckled. Like when we launched <laughs> web site. Yes. App. Yes. You know. Great. And then we were like, well, you know, then we, we kind of did it. I don't know if we did it backwards or not mm -hmm. from what you did, but then we then decided to do an app. Yeah. And that yeah. Was, you did, it's completely I, different. There it's are different completely things different involved. And it yeah. Puts everything on hold and we're like, ah, you know, 30, yeah. 60, 90 days. And then you're yeah. six months into it and it's, yeah. So yay you yeah. and, and getting past that hurdle. Um, so I got to hug your neck for real. Yeah. First got to meet you. Yes. A couple of weeks ago. Which is crazy before. that we've known each other for oh a God. while. Yeah. Well, I know. You know, so we get to zoom and everything and talk yeah. on the phone. It's like, we've already met, but yeah. it was really cool because you had invited me to, and you allowed me to be a contributor to this amazing compilation yeah. book. Do you yeah. Yeah. talk about that a little bit? Absolutely. Um, it's so exciting. I, I know you know how exciting this is. So myself and uh, my good friend Jeanette Paxia um, brought this book called Superheroes on the Spectrum. Um, we brought this book forward and it released the end of November. Um, and yeah, there it is. <laughs> Got a ribbon on it for, for yeah. Tom Barnabas Senior, my, the only board member who didn't come to the meeting. But awesome. Yeah. Well, you're you're getting a book there, guy. Um, getting it. Yeah. So you know, there's several drivers for this book, and and you know, originally Jeanette had this idea for this book, you know, many years ago, probably about ten to twelve years ago, and her her son was having a really really difficult experience in the store. There was something he he wanted and she had said no and Ooh. you know being <laughs> being a child on the spectrum that was a particular trigger for him um and mm -hmm. and he was having a, a a meltdown a tantrum and uh someone walked by and and made a comment along the lines of oh you just you know need to beat that child and you know, we, we've all been there in one way, shape or form. I had the same experience with, with my child. And the point is, and, and Becky, I, I know you know this, there is an awful lot of, of judgment out there um, about individuals with autism, about their parents, about their parents' ability to parent. Well, most about, of it's like them not even, um, yeah being cognizant mm -hmm. that this particular person or family is actually in crisis. Exactly. But golly, they could be in autism. No, it's all yeah. evil spawn, horrible parents, right? Exactly. You can't you control your child and right. Yeah. Your, your ability to, to parent. Right. And so there was that experience that we've all had. And then there's also this recognition that 
we have been through an awful lot. And, and yes, there are so many challenges that, that we talk about and we need to share, but there's also a lot of um, gifts that seeing the world through a different lens has given all of us. Um, seeing the world through the lens of your child or as an autistic adult, seeing the world in a different way. We have gifts in many, many ways and, and we really wanted to celebrate that. We wanted to celebrate the gifts that our children have. We wanted to celebrate the gifts that each of us have as neurodiverse individuals. And we also wanted to give a lot of grace um, to, to people around the world. And so we brought together, um, aside from the two of us, 31 people from across the United States, the UK and South Africa. And one of the things that we're so incredibly proud about is we have autistic adults. We have non-speaking autistic adults. We have autistic children. We have parents. Uh, who are autistic. We have parents who are parenting children with autism. I mean, we have, uh, you know, very, very diverse, neurodiverse voices, but also coming from different places, different circumstances. People have vastly different opinions on symbols and causes and treatments. I mean, it truly is very, very diverse voices that we brought to the table to share their experiences, but also share a lot of gifts that they've received from being a part of this world. Uh, really, truly. So we went to, somehow y'all managed to get yeah. all kinds of fun stuff on Jumbotrons and Times Square. Yeah. And it was really yeah. fun to go there and meet some of the other contributors and mm -hmm. just be there and, you know, Christmas in New York, uh, freezing, perfect. It was great. It was beautiful. Um, and, and to see those billboards, it, it really was a real thrill. Um, mm -hmm. what, as far as the book goes now? Yeah. Well, first of all, where do you find the time? Like, where did you find the time? <laughs> uh, that is a good question. So it was um... another passion project, but it was like a flash in the pan passion project. Uh, yeah. You know, I, if it took so much more time and energy than I think either Jeanette and I could have possibly imagined. But what what we what came out is just something we're so proud of, we're so grateful for. Um and so yeah, I don't know I don't know where the time came from. <laughs> I don't, but we made it happen. <laughs> You really did. Uh, you guys were uh, really stellar and very well organized and uh, thrilled to be a part of it and really proud of all of your efforts with Jeanette. Um, I know that when we were at dinner up there in Manhattan, yeah, uh, there was chatter of a second one. Yeah. Really? We're thinking of three, a three, three volume. Mm -hmm. Got you. Okay. And so like this next one isn't going to be soon or it might be riding on the coattails of this one or you're not uncertain no we've we've got to uh take a deep breath for a bit um we definitely want to do everything we can to get this one out and into the hands of as many people as we can we've gotten great feedback from it so far um but yeah we're already laying the groundwork for volume two and volume three people have expressed interest in participating um, I doubt that it will be something that happens this year. It could be the end of this year, early next year, meaning, no, like 2024. <laughs> meaning 2024. Yes, it's December 18th, 2023. <laughs> yeah. Just so you know, that's when this recording is being made, right? Yes. So this year, get busy. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, no. So well, yeah, know, there will be more though. You got to go down the street and get some wine. Yes, I know. I've got to have that date night with some you've wine. You got to do that for sure. So um, what can be done or what should be done or what would you like to have done as far as getting the book out there? Like, what are your ideas? Yeah. Like, what can somebody like me, yeah, being a contributor to, like, do besides, I don't know, Facebook posts or like, you know, I mm -hmm. think you had mentioned book signings though. Yes. So um, we uh, are doing press releases. So there's 
press releases that all of our contributors, um, there's templates for those. So, you know, we would really love our contributors to share press releases with their local newspapers about, you know, their contribution to the book. Um, social media, of course, sharing it um, on social media um, with your, you know, if you have your own audience or newsletter, sharing it that route is always great. Um, we're also, you know, many of us, I think almost everybody is actively involved in the autism community in some way, shape or form. So many of us are going to be attending some of the same conferences over the next year. Becky, you'll have yours in 2024. We'll have one in Pittsburgh. And so having tables and speakers who are contributors then and being able to share the book with others at conferences and live. And then uh, also just the way it's happened, we have some contributors who are co-located in certain areas. We've got a handful in New York and New Jersey and, and, Philadelphia. We've got a handful in Pittsburgh. We've got a, some in Arkansas, actually, and, and in different parts of the country. And so we're hoping to do some different book signing parties in those areas as well throughout 2024. That's awesome. I, you know, I was just thinking um, one of um, my or our Autism Travel Club mm -hmm. um, efforts. Yeah. Because you know, I, I was thinking a lot, you know, it's 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 interesting, you know, to read the book, because uh, there's always some sort of common. Oh yeah, parent, you know, there's always mm -hmm. some sort of something. Oh so yeah, it's nice to read the stories, but I think it's a it's a great book for, like, say, grandparents who wow. you know say their our children should speak when spoken to and all mm -hmm. that. Oh, boy, you know, like you know, kind yeah. of educate that outer circle of people absolutely to really let them in and so one of the things that um i do i go to conferences a lot um with different uh chambers or destination marketing mm -hmm. organizations and that kind of type thing i was like that's where i should take books yes. you know to, you know and like books absolutely and like you know like i so that thank you for sharing that so that little light bulb just went off and i'm sure you guys can smell the smoke <laughs> i can see it <laughs> smell it yeah yes we got it so i just think you're stellar like what just because i know we're going to wrap it up soon but like what is it how what do you do and i know you don't do it often yeah autism moms generally don't um when you decide to choose you yeah what does that mean? Like what, what is like a speed date with yourself or you like, how do you choose you? So I enjoy exercising. It doesn't have to be anything crazy, just like treadmill, elliptical, whatever. And exercising for me is very much, um, a mental health thing and a physical thing. You know, it's, it's something that I've done my entire life from sports to exercise. And, you know, you were asking me a little while ago, why, you know, how did you have time? Well, I will readily admit that I put myself absolutely last for many, many months of 2023 and my mental health, uh, suffered. And so I have made a commitment to myself to start exercising again. Um, I, I have not been exercising regularly for several months now. And that's the longest period of time in my adult life that I can remember going that, that long. And so for me, it, it is um, exercising, even if it's just 20, 30 minutes, it makes such a huge impact on my outlook. <laughs> my view of the world it's like you're um, crawling yeah. your way out exactly out, literally you know and then like when you don't do it for a while um you know I have this fabulous um I don't have full command of my right leg so right, right. I have that this a-linker which yes, is yes. a walking bike uh-huh and you know I I have I'm gonna admit you know time change it's cold I have oh, not yeah. done it in like two weeks or three weeks I'm missing it yeah but the, the longer you're out of it the harder it is that's right. To get back to it. it yeah, it so, is. So like, you know, we got to root each other on. Go, girl, go. Yeah, I know. I know. You got to <laughs> do it. Or are you just waiting till January 2nd? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, not me. I I uh, actually 
uh, last week, I was like, okay, I, I've got to, I've got to, I've got to do this. And for me, and this is not everybody's experience, but because it's so core to like, like who I am and my mental health, just, just, you know, four or five days of getting back into a routine of 30 minutes in the morning, my mental outlook and my ability to focus is completely different. Um, and so I know how much it, it means to me <laughs> to be able to do that and choose myself, uh, for at least 20, 30 minutes. You got it. You go yeah. girl. Yeah. So Dr. Crystal Morrison, um, you know, just rock star mama, you know, uh, she's an author. She is a techpreneur. She's rocking and changing this world for people and families. And I'm just blessed to know you and, and grateful for your time today and look forward to sharing this with all of our closest friends and beyond and getting more meerkat village things going on. So Congratulations and rock on and just let me know how I can be of service. And thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.